Hi boys and girls, today we are going to start your Claude Monet water lily painting and you'll start by putting your name and your room number and your table number circled and then turn it over and please write your last name if you know how to spell it. So, Then you're going to start smudging and smearing your paint, not with a paintbrush, but with a chunk of carpeting that has a handle attached to it. And the first thing that you'll do is you'll load your carpet up with white paint. By adding white to our colors, we're going to make a tint. A tint is a color that has white in it and it looks lighter. Some people call them pastels. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to take each corner of my carpeting and dip it in a cool color. Green, purple, and blue are cool colors. And I didn't give you so much purple because I don't think for Claude Monet's painting you're going to need a lot of purple. But I thought we'd just put it in there because it is a cool color. Now I've got my carpet loaded and then I'm just going to press it onto the paper. Now. That doesn't look like a Claude Monet painting, but if I keep pressing it and lifting it, and then I'm going to rotate the carpet a few times, and I'm just going to keep doing this until I run out of paint, and it gets, gets lighter and lighter. I can go back over and try to pick up some of that paint there, and now I need to reload. And again, I'm going to put each corner in a different color. And I'll start over here and I'm going to turn it. Be sure to lift it up and down. If you rub it back and forth like this, it all blends into one color. And you don't get that smudging and smearing look of that the Impressionist painters were looking to capture. This is a painting looking down at the water. The sky, the only place that the sky is in this picture is the reflection of the sky and the clouds in the water. That the area right there that looks real white could be a reflection of the cloud in the water. And Monet loved to paint the colors in the water from reflections of what was up above. And I'm going to, oops, I got a little bit in there. That happens to you. I'll give you some more white. You probably will need to come up and get it refilled a couple times. And don't be afraid to go right off the edge. Get the entire paper filled. That's why we have the cardboard underneath. That'll catch any of the paint that goes off the edge and it won't get on the table. I think I'm ready to put my clusters of lily pads on the painting now. Now I'm going to put some clusters of lily pads. And I'm not going to put them all in one spot. If this were a, a pond, the wind sort of blows them in clusters here and there. They wouldn't be all lined up in straight rows like a soldiers. They just, they, in nature, it's very irregular and they sort of just float on the surface. So I'm just going to take one corner. I'm going to sort of use that corner as my paintbrush and I'm just going to dab up and down some little clusters here and there of water lilies. Or actually the water lily pads. The big green leaf. We have to wait for this to dry in order to do our flowers. Otherwise our flowers are going to turn green because the green paint is wet. So next time when you come to class, we're going to paint the blooms of the water lilies. And I don't want them to look too perfect. Some will be big, some will be small. I think I'll put a bigger, bigger cluster here. And I'm just sort of dabbing it and so that I have a little more green in certain areas. And maybe this one will go right off the edge. 
and maybe one over here. I think that's about enough. And now I'm done with my painting for today. And I will put that on the drying rack. When I take it to the drying rack, I'm going to pick up my whole cardboard and use it and I'll, as, a, as a board to just slide right on the drying rack. And then it'll dry nice and flat.